Hello and welcome to the News 9 Plus show on the world's first news and current affairs OTT platform, News 9 Plus. A 31-year-old trainee doctor was raped and murdered in a medical college in Kolkata on the 9th of August. A protests have spread through India demanding justice for the victim. But let's look at how the police has botched up the investigation. First, the police called it a suicide. And when the autopsy confirmed that the victim was raped and killed, the police were slow to act. And then a mob stormed the medical college and vandalized property to terrorize the protesting doctors. The police vanished shortly after the mob appeared. And then on the 13th of August, the Kolkata High Court transferred the case to the CBI. A flowchart made by a petitioner's counsel on the sequence of events in this horrific case was also shown in the High Court. In this flowchart, the counsel shows how attempts were made to cover up this brutal rape and murder. There are several holes in this investigation over the last couple of days. Why was there an attempt to pass this rape and murder as a suicide? Why did the principal of the hospital not lodge a formal complaint with the police? How did a mob of 7,000 people suddenly appear and attack this hospital? How did the deceased suffer injuries like a broken neck, a broken left leg, ankle and finger? The autopsy report doesn't explain these injuries. And most importantly, who is protecting the rapists in this horrific case? Joining me to discuss this this evening are Dr. Alexander Thomas, the Consortium of Accredited Healthcare Organizations, Lalita Kumaramangalam, former chairperson of the NCW, and in the studio with me here is my colleague, Nivriti Mohan. Welcome to the News 9 Plus show. I want to start by asking Lalita Kumaramangalam this. 2012, Nirbhaya, 2013, Park Street, 2016, the Jisha rape and murder case, 2017, Unnao, 2017, Shimla, 2020, Hatras. This is, a, this is a list, a shameful list of names and places. What is it that makes the Kolkata rape and murder case so different from all of this, based on what we've been seeing over the last couple of days? Sandeep, uh, there are lots of things that are exactly the same. These are all horrible, heinous crimes. But what makes this difference is the seeming um, deliberate effort by the state to cover up and to ensure that the investigation is botched. I use that word ensure very consciously. You know, uh, when Nirbha happened, yes, we hung our heads in shame as we have for all the rapes and many, many more that we see happening everywhere all over the country. But to give her credit, Sheila Dikshitji, who was then chief minister, and remember she was not a BJP chief minister, so I'm not trying to play politics here. Right. She acted immediately. She made no excuses. She did not try and say that, oh, I'm going to sit on dharna with all the others, etc. all that drama, nothing of that she did. She worked to see that whatever could be done to help that poor child was done. Quite you know, to, in the opposite manner, Momota here is behaving like a truculent, out of control, spoiled, uh, you know, uh, well, sort of, I don't want to use political terms, but in certainly very entitled chief minister. What is even more uh, uh, frightening is that there are too many people who are politicians or opinion makers, etc., who are keeping their mouth zipped over the, you know, the, almost the, the terrible crime that has occurred. Uh, there are also, as you know, there are all sorts of uh, videos doing the rounds on social media, but there are some of them which undeniably are genuine. And on top of all of this, the Calcutta, the, the, the Kolkata police, the West Bengal police, has started sending threatening notes to people on social media, which are also available, anybody can read them, I think, saying that you are spreading slanderous allegations. Right. People who were there present in uh, that night when that huge... Uh, you know, the crowd of rowdies stormed that college, said that the police hid in the bathroom. They have no reason to lie about it. Right. They are people whose children, whose daughters, mothers, wives, etc. go out in the night. They are terrified. You know, I had a Bengali mother. And I am ashamed 
that the Bengal where I grew up as a little child used to roam around unattended, nobody bothered, is today in this shape and state. This is not the West Bengal that one hears about. I mean, Absolutely. this is Bengali women are supposed to be relatively better educated, much more powerful. Yes. Their, uh, their, their icon, their god is Durga. And you right. know what route Durga can take. Absolutely. This is not Durga's land. There is something seriously wrong in that state. And I also have to say that personally, I feel that Mamata is totally out of control. I don't think she's the one running the show there. I right. don't think so. Mamata herself has first, first, uh, faced a lot of violence from the lefties, etc. I really think that there's something seriously, Absolutely. you know, I could say like a case of very serious political or whatever influenza or maybe even the political version of COVID there. You know, yes, it, so it, 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 it boggles the mind, uh, 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 ma'am, that, you know, the uh, the kind of cover-up that yes. we've been seeing in the last couple of days, it, it, it is really, and as you mentioned, I mean, uh, uh, West Bengal, and as we've highlighted in the past, West Bengal, the land of Ma Durga is, uh, you know, seeing these kind of heinous crimes against women. But I want to bring in, Dr. Alexander Thomas in on this. Dr. Thomas, we've been talking over the last two years. I remember when uh, you had those incidents in Rajasthan of uh, doctors being targeted to violence. Uh, now, you know, I'm just reading this notification issued by the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare, which says that in the event of violence against any on-duty healthcare workers, the head of the institution will be responsible for filing an FIR within a maximum of six hours of the incident. You think that is going to act in cases like this where doctors, healthcare workers have been targeted? Or do you think that this is just, uh, you know, another token step, uh, you know, to, to kind of uh, de deflect uh, the blame from what has happened, this horrific crime that we've seen in uh, Kolkata? Uh, thank you for having me, Sandeep. I also represent, uh, apart from the consortium of accredited hospitals, also the Association of Healthcare Providers, and the Association of National Board Accredited Organizations. Yes. Uh, Madam has spoken about you know, things in general, but I want to focus on the medical fraternity, the healthcare workers, doctors, nurses, uh, others. And we can give you a chrono chronology of events, but I'll just stick to the last few. In 2022, we had Dr. Archana Sharma, yes. 42 year old mother who, who uh, died because of uh, harassment. 2023, we had a very young, um, child, a uh, colleague of us, Dr. Archana Das, stabbed to death by a pre-trial um, uh, patient. And now we have this brutal, this horrendous act. And the medical fraternity is actually once again engulfed in profound grief and absolute outrage. Right. These things happen. What happens? People talk about it. I won't comment too much about the notification which you just read. Uh, announcements are made, uh, things die down, the same thing happens again and again. I think this is right. not acceptable. We need to absolutely change it. And as I said, we have made multiple IMA and DHPI, have made multiple, multiple representations to the government. Right. We have met the uh, ministers, we've been given promises, but I think uh, the time has uh, uh, now come to say enough is enough. And unless we are guaranteed protection, especially our women folk, it's going to be difficult uh, for us to continue uh, saving lives and treating the hospital. I think the, the community needs to know about it. The community yes. needs to act for it. And in addition to the government, till now, the government has been strangely silent. Uh, you know that during COVID, we lost almost 3,000 of our colleagues. Yes, health workers. absolutely. We were, beaten. we were not allowed uh, to get the uh, dead. were not allowed to be buried. Our nurses were, Russia workers were beaten, were abused. Government needed our help at that time. They bought in a law. Yes. As soon as the need was over, we feel I feel very hard to say this, but as soon as the law was over, we were promised by the highest authority in the land that this would stay. Yes. It was removed. We have reached this very, very sorry state yes. of affairs. Right. Right. Absolutely. Uh, you know, uh, uh, Madam Nirmal Kaur, uh, former DGP of Jharkhand, joins us now. Uh, Ma'am, welcome to the News 9 Plus show. I want to ask you this, you know, in this case of this horrific Kolkata rape and murder case that we are discussing, there seems to be an element of collusion between, it seems, the administration and the perpetrators. Why are such attempts being made to protect the perpetrators of this heinous act? We've seen cases over the past, as uh, Madam Kumar Manglam also mentioned, that in Delhi, uh, that Nirbhaya case shook all of us. But there was an apolitical response to it. 
political parties across the spectrum condemned this. They took action to ensure some cases like this never recurred. But in Kolkata, something similar has happened. The administration seems to be hand in glove with some of these perpetrators. There are attempts being made to protect them, to destroy evidence. FIRs are not being registered. What's your take on this, ma'am? Why is this happening? Is this some level of see, political the, involvement? It, it is a highly politicized scenario. You see there are over a dozen uh, women MPs from Trinamul Congress yes. at center. None of them have spoken a word. I mean, leave alone, I mean, even men should speak, but women more so. Because a young lady has been brutalized, murdered, raped, and left in a very sad situation where the parents were not even, parents were first told that it's a suicide. Yes. Then they, they got to see the body after a long time of dating. Uh, you know, the woman was, her, uh, you know, arms akimbo, legs akimbo, and, you know, bleeding from all kinds, yes. neck broken, you know, the collar broke. Uh, I mean, all kinds of funny things, you know, she was a uh, brutally brutalized body. Yes. Very inhuman. The treatment was meted out. And then they say the semen which has been taken out is 120 cc. Right. Which, like, you know, with my 40 years of experience, perhaps indicates that there were at least three men. Right. Three people. You know, because 50 cc normally we take, you know, for a very, very, very high person. But 120 is definitely because you don't take out everything. Now, when you take out swaps, right. so 120 cc of semen indicates at least three men. And maybe the people are, you know, in in Bengal, everything is politicized. Everything right. is done by what Srinamul Kadar say. Whether you're right. running a rice mill or you're running the local police station. There's, there's an institution called Contextual Police Employees, which yes. is a very funny institution. There's some kind of para law enforcement officers. And this fellow Sanjay Roy, who has been caught, is one of them. He's a contractual employee, he's something in the police. And you know, he was staying in the police barracks over there. His uniform is very close to that of the police. Right. He was a tout, managing admissions, uh, you know, beds, you, not only for that hospital, yeah. for other hospitals also. He was very much a tout. And there, you know, everything, if you need a hospital in the yes. bed in the hospital, you need Ramul Khan. If you're running, you want to give your rice for milling somewhere, you'll have to give it to the mill at the rate that the mill carders want. Right. I mean, every small thing of economic, social, any any activity in life, it cannot run without the mill carders. So right. I believe that the mill carders are out to protect their yes. own. I mean, this is this is a very conjecture. I'm a very educated conjecture, which anyone can make. You don't right. need. Uh, I'm Absolutely. It, uh, I mean, uh, yeah, uh, ma'am, uh, you've actually highlighted this issue of uh, the, you know, very, very volatile nature of politics in West Bengal, especially when it comes to crimes against women. We've seen that in Sandesh Khali. We've seen that in the Park Street uh, rape case, uh, oh, uh, Nivriti, no. and now, uh, more recently, in the Kolkata uh, rape and murder case, where everything is, you know, uh, linked to uh, uh, the Trinamool Congress, either in one way or the other, the fact that any attack, any any such incident like this is being seen as an attack on the state government and the party that uh, uh, leads the government. But, you know, Nivriti, I want to ask you this. You've covered the Nirbhaya case in 2012, that horrific case that uh, occurred in December 16, 2012, all the way up to the sentencing of the accused and finally their execution in 2020. Four of them were hanged to death. Tell me as a reporter, and as a lawyer, your feelings about this particular case, what is your take on this particular case? You see justice delayed being justice delayed. I mean, this was a fast track case, if I remember correctly, the uh, Nirbhaya case. It still took eight years for justice to be delivered. And here you're looking at a case that even before the FIR has been filed, it's already politicized. Right. So, uh, in Nirbhaya case particularly, it, as you have also mentioned, it was a fast track case. Yes. It was put on fast track because it, it was very much highlighted. And the rarest of the yeah, rare kind of cases. Yes. Rarest of the rare case. Six yes. people involved in it and brutally, uh, Nirbhaya was brutally raped yes. and thrown on a road and then nobody to pick them up. Absolutely. It, it shook the nation's conscience and I think everyone came together. There were street protests of the kind that we haven't seen, uh, you know, protesting this very, very uh, brutal crime. But uh, what's the larger uh, message out of that? Uh, the, even the rarest of the rare case, uh, Nimriti, took almost eight years. It took almost eight years because there is a procedure uh, in law. I must tell you, even after the sentence was announced, it w it almost took an year for them, uh, for uh, the entire system to get them executed, right. actually. 
Right. So they had to, uh, the parents had to file another petition so that the execution uh, can take place yes. uh, faster. But then what happened? They exploited the lawyers of uh, all the four uh, culprits. They yes. exploited each and every loophole of law. Right. Like uh, when they went for some review petition yes. when uh, after sentence, then review petition was not uh, filed together by all the convicts. Right. It, it was taken up one by one. They uh, kept on filing it in, in order to delay the entire process. Right. So had it been six uh, culprits yes. together, then it would have taken longer period. Right. So they did it for all the remedies that were av available to them, including the mercy petition. So yes. for mercy petition also, they did not go together. So all these aspects are also to be taken care of. And as you, you, you mentioned some of the cases which are um, really known to the public. Yes. These are the cases which were highlighted, but there are 30,000 cases that uh, of rape that yes. uh, occur every year, right. around 3.3 .3 lakh cases in last 10 years. That makes an uh, makes it an absolutely. Average but of but you know, like cases. you said, uh, uh, you know, uh, Nivriti, the fact that uh, cases like this were delayed on account of the process of law itself of the you know the long lengthy proce procedural delays and all of that that you've highlighted but the fact is that in this case you know even before the fir is filed there's an attempt at covering it up i'm going to ask lalita kumar manglam this the fact that you know evidence is destroyed uh, the uh, perpetrators are not identified this is actually a case that's as of today it's unsolved we don't know who the perpetrators were we have one person who's been exposed who's been identified uh, Sanjoy Roy, but no, and, and as our panelists have brought out very clearly, there seem to be more than one person involved. There is an attempt to shield the culprits in this case. Uh, Lalita Kumar Manglava, how do you see this, ma'am? In this particular case, do you see justice being denied at the very beginning itself, rather than this entire long procedural delays that we've been talking about in past cases like this? This case is in a league of its own. Right from the beginning, there is an open cover-up, open, right. you know, without conscience, without any hesitation. It looks like there's a cover-up. Making sure that they gather the evidence, that they stop people from yes. uh, from spoiling the evidence, etc., compromising the evidence. Right. What are they doing? They're sending threatening notes to people who are, you know, uh, talking on social media. Everybody knows that social media sometimes exaggerates. And many of us don't believe a lot of what we hear on social media or even see. But the point here is that, not only that, the head of the institution, why was he given, I mean, you know, transferred uh, to another hospital, it looks like he was given an elevation. He should have been sacked. There are too many things that the state government has done and Mamata is madly doing, saying that I am going to do in these dharnas, considering she's both home and health minister and the chief minister, who's she going to protest, protest against? This is her state. Right. She has no uh, no sense and no you know no intention of taking any sort of even moral responsibility. When this happens in all the other states, everybody says the CM should resign. I'm not saying it's wrong. Even I have sometimes said it when you know you're really angry and upset. Yes. But the point here is the total lack of culpability that the state is showing. Whether it's their 12 women MPs who are making very general you know sort of comments. Or whether it is a people from other people from the party, their leaders, who are very verbose leaders, like Derek O'Brien, etc., who are right. making such sort of general off the cuff, almost in the air remarks. They should, it is a matter of such shame, both nationally and more especially for the state. I mean, you know, if you, it's like I live in Tamil Nadu, if something like this happens here, we, everybody would be out of the state, see, yes. on the street, regardless. People there seem afraid to even come out to protest something. Right. What is this? I mean, and uh, it is very clear that the mob that went in there went in there with the single minded intention of trying yes. to destroy as much evidence as they could. This nonsense that they are talking, I really wish I could use stronger words, but I'm on national television. This nonsense yes. that they are talking about, no, 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 they were 50 yards or 100 yards or 20 yards from the room where it happened. I mean, there are many, many uh, technical reasons that we can be given. They have compromised, I think, I'm 100% sure, I don't think, I'm 100% sure they have compromised, you know, things like uh, 
uh, shoe marks and uh, right. handprints and all of this. And um, nobody seems to be even reacting with any sense of responsibility in the entire West Bengal administration. Absolutely. What sort of Horrific. Yes, it, it's yeah, a total lack as, of culpability, as, as you our, mentioned. Uh, yes. Yeah, yeah. As Sandeep ji, uh, as um, uh, uh, our friend from uh, Chhattisgarh, the former DGP, pointed out, nothing moves in West Bengal without the TMC's nod. Right. Nothing. I mean, you want anything, you have to go via the TMC. So the machinery there is is so well, uh, so well entrenched. Yes. What are they doing now? What are Why they doing are they now, indeed? Yes. TMC? And I'm going to ask. Uh, uh, Ma'am, I'm going to ask Dr. Alexander Thomas this very uh, 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 dark uh, prognosis given by uh, Lalita Kumar Mangalam, which is the head of the NCW, former head of the NCW, and she's seen many such cases. But this particular case, by the virtue of the kind of uh, politicization that we've seen and the kind of attempts to destroy evidence, Dr. Alexander Thomas, doctors all over the country are outraged. It's not just uh, you know, common citizens, of course. Uh, doctors have particular reason to be scared of this if you're unable to protect, uh, you know, healthcare uh, workers, doctors in places where they work, uh, what to talk of the common citizens in the streets outside. But this particular case, Dr. Thomas, how outraged is the medical community and what are you going to be doing in the next days ahead to ensure that justice is served on the uh, perpetrators of this horrific act? So, Sandeep, it's not only doctors. I think uh, we have to look at all healthcare workers. Yes. I just read that, I don't know whether it's true, so I'm not commenting that a nurse was raped uh, in uh, Jharkhand or somewhere in the north, but I know that a nurse yes. was molested, a surgeon was molested in Coimbatore. Uh, so, yes, uh, the medical fraternity is, uh, uh, we are very angry, but um, uh, I think uh, uh, generally we are a soft target and we don't react too much because we provide a very uh, a service which is very, yes. very essential. We keep it in mind, but I think uh, the time has come now that we have to do something. We have to ensure that the government, the policymakers, and the public know what is happening. So, in a nutshell, what are what are we planning to do? The IMA, uh, we are working under the leadership of the IMA, IMA and HBI and all the other organizations have are uh, stopping uh, non-essential services from yes. Saturday to Sunday. That's one thing. But this time, we have resolved that we are not going to stop. Just ask the government and keep quiet about. Uh, uh, this thing so uh, about what has happened so what are we going to ask ask is that as i told you there was during covid when we were needed the government uh, made adequate uh, measures they, they passed a bill which protected healthcare workers uh, and very strict uh, uh, punishments to those who assaulted healthcare workers because i think prevention is very important people need to be aware and need to know the consequences of the action uh, that is one thing that we are going to follow up now, one of the other uh, uh, advisories that we are giving our hospital is that they have to look after their staff, especially our women folk. Uh, they work uh, so hard, they work uh, in, their own, uh, in their own spaces and to be attacked and exploited and killed in your own, uh, in your yes. own uh, work is absolutely unavoidable. And I think I've shared with you a copy of the book that you've written on perils and practice. Yes. Again, that was, I mean, my colleagues here talking at the national level that, to, that women folk, it, it is shameful. But my expertise is more within the healthcare sector, so I will limit myself to that. So we have uh, already asked our, uh, about our guidebook uh, saying what uh, our healthcare workers should do in situations of impending violence. We've had a national health conclave where we had policy makers come in. Uh, and at the end of it, uh, nothing has moved. So we are actually focusing mainly that the central government passes this bill which protects healthcare workers, yes. makes hospital make hospitals safe zone. The other thing that we, have, that we are hoping to do is, you know, there are residents. We have all been through residency. The resident, uh, actually, in most of the hospital, the resident is the backbone of the hospital. And unfortunately, even today, the resident works 36 hours, sometimes 48 hours. So we are. Uh, talking to the NMC, we're writing to all our uh, uh, stakeholders, saying that the residents should not work more than 24 hours. If they work more than 24 hours, they should be given a break. They should right. be given adequate protection, adequate uh, facilities where they work. Because in this particular case, this young child had to go to a seminar room to take her rest. And it was after 36 hours, so she must have been absolutely physically tired. So these are some things that we are looking at it from our side and trying to make some reforms. 
But the major, major issues that we want the government to come up with this law, we want the public, we want yes. uh, the media, everybody to understand that we work under very difficult situations. And at the end of the day, if you do not remedy this, what's going to happen? The bright young minds, already many bright young minds who wanted to come to medicine are not coming to medicine because of violence, because of distress. Yes. So uh, we, we will, if we, if we, are, if we don't uh, take adequate uh, precautions, if we don't take steps now, uh, it's going to uh, it's going to hurt the nation. It's going Absolutely, to it's national. going to hurt the nation. And uh, and I'm glad you said it, uh, Dr. Thomas. The fact that you're going to not uh, take this lying down, this particular incident, is you're going to follow it to its logical conclusion. And of course, uh, we here at uh, News 9 promise to do the same. We will not take the spotlight of this case for as long as the perpetrator is not caught and not hunted down, not convicted for their crimes. But uh, thank you very much, uh, Lalita Kumar Mangalam, uh, Dr. Alexander Thomas, Nirmal Kaur and my colleague, Nirvithi Mohan, here in the studio with me. Je thanks for joining us this evening to talk about this horrific rape and murder in Kolkata about who is really sh shielding, who's sheltering these perpetrators of this heinous, heinous crime.